नमस्कार वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून डियर लर्नर्स आई डॉक्टर इन तुम वेलकम यू टू स्टडिंग फिलोसॉफी ऑफ टीचिंग फ्रेंड्स इन माई प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव बीन अनरावलिंग वाई फिलोसॉफी इज एन इंटरडिसिप्लिनरी सब्जेक्ट वाई अनरावलिंग वी डेल्ट विद द टेन जेनरिक पॉइंट एज गिवन बाय क्रिक पैट्रिक इन करिकुलम डिजाइनिंग During discussing those ten generic point, we try to analyze and understand that why each point at each point of curriculum design, one has to be concerned about other disciplines. Why education is interdisciplinary? We understood by while discussing those ten generic points. So, friend, taking on from that particular point, now let us try to understand why education is relevant and how it has been developed as an interdisciplinary subject. first of all we have to understand that the no education in itself is relevant until and unless first it will unfold the full potential of the child what does that mean here we will we won't go into the detail of realism or idealism as it has been given by by different isms as far as the potential of the child is concerned we will try to understand this mean that the development of the child in the society has to be on the same page in such a manner that the all the domains of the education are utilized for the development of the child here to uh, uh, understand it further now let us try to understand that what are the domains of the uh, which are what are the domains which basically the education deals with uh, domains can be the subject expert apart from that the domain would also be the other discipline which is having an impact on the education like we talked about psychology we talked about sociology we talked about economy that means when we will to, we will be talking about the development of the child that means to create a child which is productive and under having the understanding of the socio cultural dimensions who would be Uh, turn who would be becoming a good citizen apart from that who would be turning to be an important person as far as work area is concerned because the most important aspect of the education is to create a uh, not just the best citizen uh, the citizen who is having the knowledge of the constitution who knows how to practice the basically Uh, the basic uh, rights as well as the duties which have been embedded in our city in our constitution that is one uh, one of the function of the education but apart from that another important function of the education is also to create a skilled person to in such a manner that that person can be able to utilize that skill for earning his livelihood so uh building up citizenship for a country striving to become a democratic uh, agglutinarian and secular society is one of a function one of a function of the education that is why when we say that the when we, when we talk about the interdisciplinary approach it means we have the interdisciplinary approach to the knowledge concept formation as well as application in daily life it also attributes to the critical thinking and creativity so all these dimensions which are covered in the education all of them have interdisciplinary approach another important uh, aspect which is the development of uh, values in the society particularly when we talk about the society uh, the current society the present society globally as well as nationally we say that we have the stratified and hierarchical society here the uh, the the objective of evol evolving value system in this pluralistic society has been made the role of has been made a agenda of education this is goal of an education another important aspect we have to understand that we education is also there to develop the generic competency which of course uh, uh, cut across the different domains of knowledge as well as skills when we talk about the different domains of knowledge as we uh, try to unravel and understand in our previous lecture also it run across economics it run, run across the sociology it also run across psychology and it also run across the political science as well as the 
uh, the subject domain in which the student is being taught. For example, if a person is being prepared for the computers, uh, uh, computer software, that means we are provide, we are, we have developed a B.Tech degree or we have developed a B.C.A. degree. Why we have developed those degree? Because keeping in view certain domain of knowledge. For when we talk about B.Tech, we have the specialized we are trying to understand more of a hardware than the software. When we talk about the BCA that is Bachelor of Computer Application, we are more concerned about application mode of the computers than understanding the core functioning of the computers. So, this is the domain of the knowledge which has to be passed on by the education and thereby it is aiming at skill formation in the context of rapidly changing technology which demands formation of multiple skills, transfer of learning and ability to continue unlearn and learn. So, a substantial proportion uh, of the expectations of the parents and the society from their children who are going to the schools or the universities is that education will be able to enable their children to face the world of work that is they would be provided with the confidence and carve out a meaningful livelihood for themselves. For this purpose, it is essential that learning emerges from child's social ethos and his or her productive experience and at the same time ensures that the child will have access to global knowledge and challenges. So, here by this what we understand is that education is interdisciplinary in nature. To understand it further now let us try to understand that when uh, education means uh, environmental uh, studies, education means mathematical component, education also encompasses earth science, education also encompasses science, vocational studies, physical sciences. As you can see in this particular diagram all the domains or all the disciplines are contributing to make education more productive. This means education is interdisciplinary. If it was trans then uh, we, you would have seen the knowledge being transmitted from education to the different fields also, but it is not happening. What is happening is that made be the communication, made be the social studies, made be the arts, made be the humanities, made be the mathematics. All of them are providing their knowledge, information, learning to the education to make it complete. That is why it is called interdisciplinary study. This type of study allow the student to learn by making connection between ideas and concepts across different disciplinary boundaries. This means that student will be learning in a manner that he or she would be applying the knowledge which is gained in one discipline to another. And, and as a way of deepening the learning experience. For example, when we study research in edu education, there we are also trying to understand quantitative aspect. When we try to understand quantitative aspect, that means we are having the contribution of mathematics. When we are talking about the various testing, mathematical testing being applied in the research, who is contributing? The mathematics is contributing. When we are trying to understand psychology of the child, which subject has given its concepts or we can say where the education has got the knowledge from, it is again the psychology. When we are trying to understand that whether that particular educational model will work in the, in the society or not, here again the sociology components are being uh, taken by the education in such a manner that they are being utilized to, pro, to enable the education to be of importance to the society or community. So, the most effective approach to interdisciplinary study means enabling student to build their own interdisciplinary pathway by choosing courses which make sense to them. For example, it is not difficult to find a theme which crosses over disciplinary boundaries in literature, art and history of science or mathematics. So, studying topics thematically in one way to bring ideas together resulting in more meaningful learning. This can occur by allowing students to choose their own subject and their learning which will be deepened when they will reflect on the connection between what they are learning in dis different discipline. How would it happen when a student who has who is trying to 
uh, understand how mathematics is to be taught in the classes he or she would be having an information of that particular subject that is that particular discipline which is mathematics he or she would be knowing the correlation or the addition or subtraction or uh, you can say matrices vectors that would be known to that person because he or that is why when we uh, when we have a teacher that why do we ask a teacher to have a graduation degree or a post graduation degree in that particular subject because he or she is expected to have expertise of that particular subject that particular area may it be the english may it be the social studies may it be the political science may it be the economics may it be the mathematics may it be the hindi so that discipline should be known to the child then again the education trains him to utilize that particular knowledge and information in such a manner that it can be transmitted in the best possible manner how do we train because when we talk about ba degree it is training how do we train we train them by making them understand the uh, psychology of the student by making them understand how social uh, social dynamics of the of the particular society have to be understood only then the that knowledge would be realistically transferred to the students so here when we talk about education being a interdisciplinary study the biggest barrier is achieving the true interdisciplinary study because when we talk about uh, education that means it has to be collaboration of educators and this is very difficult to achieve because here that means we will have to bring on the same level the psychologists the sociologists the mathematician the environmentalist all of them have to come together with their domain knowledge with their contribution in such a manner that education turns out to be most potentially learning uh, content that means uh, because what is the purpose of education the purpose of education is teaching and learning to be very simple it will be maximized when the professional from discipline discipline uh, disciplines will work together to serve a common purpose if they will be at uh, head across each other that means they will be fighting with each other that means the we will not be able to have the common purpose and to transmit the information to the students we need to have a common purpose which should be coming from the different disciplines and here the connection between different discipline or the subject area this is the sole motto of education such interaction is in support of constructivist paradigm which allow for a new knowledge construction and deeper understanding of the ideals than disciplinary education now friends you must have understood from this discussion that why we say that education is lifelong learning because education is not which is restricted to certain discipline education means that it is going to be throughout the life one thing secondly apart from that we have to understand that the education will be taking into cognizance the different and the new kind of uh, knowledge which will be developed in other domains and that will be reconstructed and reconstructed for developing more understanding of those ideas or that discipline study so uh, as to understand it further why education is more important when we see it from the indian point of view india is a developing nation and it has many social barriers also and who will help to uh, help the student to understand those social barriers as well as go across those social barriers understand the social evils understand what is expected of him after he grows up how to imbibe the value of good citizenship how to understand uh, the nature how, uh, how nature is to be protected and why it is so relevant that one should be environment friendly as well as uh, dedicated to develop the and uh, develop the environment in such a manner that the environment sustains us for for longer duration otherwise the day is not very long when the environment or the globe or the earth will decide to destroy us so for having longer sustain sustain uh, sustainability of the human beings or as well as the other animals and the we need 
to be environment friendly we need to have more trees we need to understand that we should not be pressurizing nature with our expectations and we should let the nature flourish in the flourishing of nature lies our own development our own flourishing so who who has taken the responsibility of transmitting these ideas it is education of course with the tenderness with the care it is education which couples tenderness care with the dynamism and with the understanding of different subject in such a manner individual grows grows into a uh, the child the child who goes to the school at the end of the education after 18 years or 25 years or so he grows into a person who is a good citizen who understand its environment who understand the challenges the global challenges who understand the social problem in the nation who also understand that how complex the uh, the globe is or the knowledge is and accordingly the uh, he or she can attend to the life happily so the education does the catalytic action in this complex and dynamic growth process it is planned meticulously and then executed with great sensitivity for the growth of an individual to understand it further let us try to understand it that india's political and social life is passing through the phase which poses the danger of erosion to the long accepted values so goals of secularism socialism democracy professional ethics they are under increasing strain in the rural areas with the poor infrastructure and the social services we have to provide the trained and educated youth unless rural urban disparities are reduced and determined measures are taken to promote diversification and dispersal of educational and uh, environment the growth of our population uh also need to be brought down significantly over the coming decades so these are the challenges which are in the front of the nation and who is the nation we are the nation our kids are the nation uh the they are the future of the nation so those challenges have to be brought in front of the children and they have to be educated about these problems as well as trained how to deal with these problems so the largest single factors which can help to achieve the spread of literacy and education among the women children men adult education who is doing it again the education so we have to understand that the education is not simply restricted to human resource development rather it is aiming at uh, building citizenship uh, building the uh, environment friendly people and apart from that caring individuals happy individuals so these are again the more they are the, the the goals of education are multifarious because the goals of education are multifarious that is why it is interdisciplinary so that students can make connection between the discipline and the education and see the correlation which improve overall learning and student also need to uh, need to be growing uh, of course what is the, what is, how is education working education is providing them for fragmented as well as continuous education to enrich the learning experiences so discrepancies between the ideals and the actual life which is aim of the philosophy that is being taken care of by education that is why we say that the philosophy has an important role to play when we talk about economic side then we understand that the expenses which are incurred that have to be understood by the children and they have to understand that how those expenses are to be reduced as well as the, how the economy has to be understood and money has to be utilized purposefully so that is a purpose authentic purpose of the learning so when we talk about education we have to understand not just what are uh, what is uh, why it is interdisciplinary we have to understand why it is uh, benefiting the teaching learning now let us try to understand that when we are providing the interdisciplinary approach to the child he is getting the varied perspective from the different topics which is exploring again the critical thinking is developing and skills is being developed 
we have discussed it in great detail. So, I will be just talking about the points only. Here the students uh, when we talk about interdisciplinary uh, learning and teaching, it means the students shall be consolidating learning by synthesizing ideas from many perspective. And uh, of course, he or she will be considering the alternative way of acquiring knowledge also and exploring the topics across the range of subjects. Boundaries motivating students to pursue new knowledge in the different subjects. And of course, transferable skill of critical thinking, synthesis research are also developed through education and interdisciplinary knowledge and application of different discipline can also lead to the create creativity. These are the basically importance of the education because education aims at making learning experience more meaningful. It aims at providing new opportunities uh, which are uh, which are based upon the understanding of the different disciplines and again we have to understand that all the disciplines which we have discussed they are also dynamic in nature. So, that makes education a very dynamic subject a very dynamic subject as well as discipline. So, it is also responsible for demonstrating real life applications as well as demonstrating varied perspective and flexibility in the problem solving. It is also there to bridge the communication gap between the professionals and uh, also give the transferable skills to the children. And as far as the teaching is concerned, we know that teaching is social and cultural process which is planned in order to enable an individual to learn something in his life which we can describe that uh, when we talk about teaching. It means teaching is social process and it takes when we decide upon the uh, what is to be taught then naturally uh, we here we talk about the pedagogy as well as the psychology. So, uh, teaching is a social process, but it also take into co consideration learning of the students. So, that makes it psychological process. And because it is giving information, so that means it is linked to particular domain, the particular area, the particular subject may be the mathematics, English or uh, Hindi. So, teaching tells children about the things they have to know and students cannot find out themselves. So, communication of knowledge is an essential part of teaching. Again, the teaching is an interactive process because uh, the students will question the teacher, teacher will answer and similarly when we talk about the assessment or evaluation teacher will question the student as to understand that whether they have progressed and developed or not. So, teaching is a process of development and learning. It is something which causes a change in the behavior. It is an art as well as science. It is face to face encounter. It is observable, measurable and modifiable. These are the three important aspects. Uh, that is why we have the assessment otherwise we would not have uh, the assessment of the students. Teaching is a skilled occupation that is why we provide a training to the students, uh, uh, training to the uh, student teachers. So, every successful teacher is expected to know the general methods of teaching learning situation. Teachers are the one who facilitates learning, teaching means both conscious as well as unconscious process and it is uh, transmitting, it is transferring from the memory level to the reflective level and teaching is continuum of training, conditioning, instruction and indoctrination. From here on let us try to understand how it is different from training. Friends we have understood what teaching is. Now, let us try to understand how it is different from training. Uh, teaching me, uh, are interchangeably used at times whenever we talk about skill transfer then we use training and teaching interchangeably, but there is an important distinction. What is an important distinction when we talk about teaching that means, hey, where we are talking about development of the student, development of the child complete, completely. When we are talking about training that means, the objective here is more of a uh, doing the and as far as teaching is concerned it is it may be more theoretical and abstract. So, uh, training is doing and teaching is talking, listening and uh, understanding. So, when we talk about practical hand on experiences who is doing it? Of course, training. Teaching seeks to impart knowledge and provide information while training intend to develop those abilities. For example, we can teach the child what uh, buoyancy is. But how would he understand fluid dynamics or water displacement? He would understand it uh, only if 
he does it for example if we talk about what swimming is do you think we can make a good swimmer here swimming means that training is required the training will make a person good swimmer the teaching cannot make a swimmer uh, so we have understood training means to develop abilities to practice with instruction or supervision and teaching means to provide knowledge instruction or information now let us try to understand how teaching is different from learning learning is a continuous process which every one of us is doing it uh, with no age bar and we are doing on our own from books from the google from the talking to other people by seeing others so this is something which is going on as far as teaching is concerned it is more of a formal approach giving lessons with learning outcome in mind so learning can be without the teacher but teacher teaching cannot be without the student so this is an important demarcation that for teaching we need students but for learning we don't need teachers now let us try to understand the difference between teaching and instruction in teaching the scope is very wide and it is formal as well as informal but and it is of course the continuum and modification of behavior it is development of the potential of an individual it is uh, utilizing range of methods and as far as instruction is concerned its scope is narrow and limited it is usually formal it is part of teaching for example when students go to the lab are they being taught they are being instructed they are instructed how to use other chemicals which are lying in the lab as to produce certain results so instruction means to impart knowledge of specific subject instruction is generally confined to the classroom now let us try to understand how conditioning is different from teaching teaching aims at the development of potential and in intellect and of course it has a broader scope and in teaching there is a curriculum that is usually very comprehensive and it is a broader process with various levels but as far as conditioning is concerned it aims at modification of behavior and learning habits scope of conditioning is relatively narrow it reinforces reinforcement plays an important role as far as conditioning is concerned conditioning is done by repetition of behavior to be acquired in conditioning curriculum is fixed to understand conditioning we can understand uh, the various psychologists which you have uh, uh, understood and learnt you must have understood that how the apes are conditioned or the Uh, monkeys are conditioned even the dogs are conditioned so you have understood what conditioning is in conditioning curriculum is fixed evaluation in conditioning is done on the basis of acquisition of certain behavior or habit conditioning is considered as the lowest level of entire process of teaching so now let us try to understand the difference between inquiry and teaching how inquiry is different from teaching when we talk about inquiry inquiry means we try to engage and stimulate students learning it is important to note how an inquiry approach to teaching differs from the traditional approach now to understand it further traditional model in traditional model students are passive learners while the teacher provides uh, here the teacher provides all the information but in the inquiry based model students actively participate in learning and therefore more engaged in the process and content where as far as uh, understanding difference between inquiry and teaching is concerned inquiry is principal learning theory that is uh, it is basically trying to understand one particular theory but teaching is constructivism uh, teaching uh, teaching is not constructivism when we talk about the uh, what is the theory of inquiry then it is constructivism constructing the knowledge constructing the information as far as student participation is concerned in the case of inquiry it is active and students uh, involvement outcome is increased responsibility what is the role of the student here the role of the student in case of inquiry is of a problem solver the role of uh, the curriculum goal or the teacher's role is of the guide or a facilitator and the role of the curriculum is process oriented in case of a traditional teaching Uh, the principal learning theory is behaviorism student participation is passive and student involvement in outcome is decreased responsibility student role is that of a problem solver or a follower and teacher's role is that of a director and transmitter so friends 
uh, in the lecture you have understood the difference between the teaching inquiry teaching and inquiry you have also understood how the teaching is to be differentiated from the conditioning we have also tried to unravel the difference between teaching and training so you must have understood how it is different another important aspect which is indoctrination to simply differentiate between the two indoctrination means the particular behavior is to be indoctrinated the particular uh, aspect is to be indoctrinated in the scope of indoctrination is very small and it is restricted to certain beliefs for example we say that the what religion is doing religion is indoctrinating but is teaching doing the same no teaching has a larger scope it provides freedom to the child to learn in uh, and it is completely this this aspect differentiated from the indoctrination friends on this note i dr renu thoma shall be taking your leave as to join you on some another interesting topic namaskar and very good afternoon